And if I can ask you, Madam Vice President, President Biden has said that Americans will feel some pain for the sake of defending freedom and liberty, but there does seem to be no end game in sight. How long should Americans expect? How long should we be bracing for um, this really sort of um, historic inflation and some unprecedented gas prices? Sure. Well, we struggle to heat our homes, we have to pay for your parade. Thank you for coming. The taxpayer pays 100 million for you, not for me from Benin, not for the king. Have you personally been affected by austerity? Well, I think the whole country has... I'm asking about you. Well, it's not about me, it's about My the question whole country. My question's about you. How have you been affected? Have you been adversely affected? Well, I, what I would say is that we have had a period I don't know why it's funny. where it's a not, lot of I'm people not, have had a terrible time with austerity. I, my my answer is that all of us have been affected How by the difficult decisions that had to be made. But what we have done is we've limited those difficult decisions. We've made sure we target money on those on the lowest incomes. It would we've, be okay, wouldn't it, to say you haven't been affected? Well, I don't. I just don't. I don't think it's a good question. I don't wow. know what it means. Well, we struggle to heat our homes. We have to pay for your parade. The G20 summit is underway in Rome as leaders from the world's major industrialized nations meet. Did you see them up there? Did you see them all up there? Up under the bright lights, up there in the big time under the bright lights, strutting, strutting and carrying on. Like they were not the circus clowns. Like all that lipstick and all that face paint made them serious contenders, serious contenders for a non-comedic role. Strutting like they was big time, up there in the big time, strutting and singing, singing the tune. Singing the marching tune like someone was supposed to be paying attention. Paying attention to them. Just because they're under the bright lights up there in the big time. It was a big time, big, big time. And these supporting actors in a non comedic role were singing the show tune like it was a funeral dirge to the seventh act of a Sisyphean farce. They had their marching orders. And they were singing the marching tune we was all supposed to march to. They said monkey see, monkey do. But this monkey don't live in no zone. I turned them off. Turn the switch off. Sure, I still live in this world. This world where people plug in, tune in, turn on. I think it is real. I know. This isn't the big time. This isn't where it's at. This is nothing. This is nowhere. It means nothing to me. Canada and our allies will defend democracy. We are taking these actions today to stand against authoritarianism. Global controls will have to be imposed, and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Crises precipitate change. I want to divide the virus to bring dire straits to your environments. Crush your corporations with a mild touch. Trash your whole computer system and revert you to papyrus. I want to divide the virus to bring dire straits to your environments. Crush your corporations with a mild touch. Trash your whole computer system and revert you to papyrus. I have already planned. This is 3030, the time of global unification. Break right through they terminals, burn them all, slaves to silicon, corrupt politicians with leaders and their keywords. We do need more money. We don't just need more money for vaccines for children eventually. We need more money to plan for the second pandemic. There's going to be another pandemic. We have to think ahead. You seem particularly triggered right now. Can you tell me what happened? I've had. Dreams that weren't just dreams.
Am I crazy? We don't use that word in here. John Wick took two blue pills just to make sure he couldn't see the Matrix anymore. Clock, clock, the horsemen don't stop. Famine, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about famine. More specifically, governments around the world have announced that we will be facing food shortages soon, but hey, don't worry, they got this thing all under control. They have your best interests at heart. Don't sweat it, why do you look nervous? Just sit back, watch some Netflix, have a sip of your white claw, and take a deep breath, dear citizen. Was that Beijing? Jesuits taught you high school, college, Holy Cross, right. Regis High School in Manhattan. What what impact, what does it mean to be taught by Jesuits? We hear about Jesuits all the time. Well, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a great experience, I have to say. go together. If you get a big war or a big uh, pandemic or a big famine, you'll get the other two. You get one, you get the other two. It's three musketeers. Pestilence, war, famine, death. Spin the wheel. Which one are we landing on today? They're living at, at just the present And they never think about future. They never think about past. And they're always Jamping and jamping from moment to moment to the Well, do you think they're going to find a purpose? I hope so. And it is also my program, my own program. Just have a scroll through TikTok. We saved you 16 cents on hot dogs last 4th of July. You think we're going to let you starve? We're going to see uh, a lot of starvation and a lot of hot human osmotic pressure, the migration. Yeah, uh, and, and of course, this leads to pandemic. We'll have real pandemics because, again, when you have many people starving, they're uh, first of all they start migrating and eating things they don't normally eat, and their immune systems are depressed. Anyway, bottom line is, every time you get big famines, you get big pandemics, which will create more war. We get that positive feedback loop. Well, good. Then we can lock everybody. Then we can lock everybody down again, eh? That'd be real fun. We can lock everybody down again like they did in Shanghai and then we can disrupt the supply chains any, ever, even more and then we can starve a bunch more people and maybe we will settle out with 600 million people and have a sustainable planet. We see Panama, for instance, going in the wrong direction at this point uh, and that's obviously vital Panama Canal. Uh, we see uh, you know, uh, issues between uh, Iran and uh, Israel which could cause other energy issues. Nord Stream is cut. We've had the explosions in Texas and, and uh, in Oklahoma. Energy's gone, and even if Nord Stream were wide open, uh, Europe's got a problem with energy this winter. That's just a fact of life, which means next year, remember, famine creates famine. Next year, we're not gonna have enough fertilizer, period. We're eating the food that's already been grown at this point. So right now, uh, yeah, Jesus. And so and we, in, in addition to this, normally we have a lot more resilience, for instance, yeah. The droughts that we have in the United States, okay, we have ter we do have incredibly terrible droughts right now in the United States. Normally, we could kind of fill in the gaps, and it's not going to be happy days, but we'll fill it out. Nobody's going to starve to death. 
uh, but now our resilience is reduced. And so what, you know, we're not going to be able to be sending food out to all over Africa and these sorts of places without starving our own people. Now keep in mind, by the way, during famines, often countries like China were exporting huge amounts of food while their own people were starving. Mao was doing that. Actually, Stalin did that when uh, Ukraine was starving. It, that's, a, that's a strange thing about famine. Some countries continue to export food while their people starve. Well, that is what you do when you're aiming at starvation. Yeah, well, so you're a lot of fun to talk to. Last week, on the same day, actually, President Joe Biden and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau talked about impending food shortages. During a press conference, Trudeau warned food shortages were on Canada's horizon. He blamed global supply chain issues in that pesky little old war in Ukraine for these problems. In the day's other news, a near-unanimous Congress voted to cut off normal trade relations with Russia and ban imports of Russian oil. The yeas are 100. The nays are zero. The bill as amended is passed. President Joe Biden said that food shortages are going to be real and that it was largely due to sanctions imposed on Russia. The yeas are 100. The nays are zero. Uh, Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities which, in fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. Uh, you know, scientists from all of the countries, they are thinking uh, on one way, uh, to make uh, something better for uh, people, better health, better security. Ukraine has a uh, biological research facilities. You know, scientists from all of the countries, they are thinking uh, on one way, uh, to make uh, something better for uh, people, better health, better security. Uh... I will say this once. Ukraine does not have a biological weapons program. Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities. President Biden tonight delivering this blunt warning to Vladimir Putin. Russia would pay a severe price to use chemical weapons. At a heated UN Security Council meeting, Russia accused the US and Ukraine of preparing to use chemical and biological weapons. What the US is blasting as lies, a false Russian pretext to justify a potential chemical attack. The United States has said that Russia may soon turn to using chemical weapons following false claims that Ukraine was poised to use them. His back is against the wall, and uh, he's, now he's talking about new false flags he's setting up, including he's, he's asserting that we, in America, have biological as well as chemical weapons in Europe. Simply not true. I guarantee you. Isn't this the same fella who told us that this past winter all the purebloods were going to die? It's also just amazing how much this Ukraine-Russia conflict is fair game to use as an excuse for, like, anything. The media be like, yeah, we've lied to you about everything that you can possibly imagine. The Ukraine story? That's not true. Well, part of the issue is um, in China, there's a, a disproportionate number of men in comparison to women. Yeah. You got it right. Because of one child policy, right. a lot of girls got aborted in China. So they kept boys. Now, so there's many, many men that oh. have no chance of ever finding a woman because there are no women. Yeah, over 30 million men in the rural areas cannot find the wives. So they, 30 over 30 million, and it's number gonna keep going up right now. <sighs> so that's a big problem for Chinese regime. They're living at, at just prison. And they never think about future, they never think about past, and they're always jumping and jumping from moment to moment, you see. Well, do you think they're going to find a purpose? I hope so. And it is also my program, my own program, 